All right, so we're going to get started with some mapping this morning. Uh, today we're working in Kamloops. I've never done anything like this, so uh, bear with me a bit as this works out. So first step is I'm going to bring in some OpenStreetMap, uh, and so I'm going to collect all my different base maps, save them nicely in the same place, and then uh, go from there. I'm not expecting to talk this much throughout because, yeah. So the area we're interested in is kind of this park area through here, uh, Pacific Way Park uh, and the elementary school area. So I'm just gonna go a little bit beyond that on all sides. All right, we've got that downloaded and now we're gonna go to the city of Kamloops, uh, open data site. And I'm gonna grab some LiDAR and some ortho photos. So I'm gonna actually need all four of these tiles because I do want to include this building here just a little bit off to the side. So let's start downloading those. And my downloads are starting to show up across the bottom. And hopefully this doesn't overload my internet uh, with the stream and the download. Alrighty, while that's all downloading, let's get our map file set up. Uh, so I've got Open Orienting Map 0.9.5, what's currently the latest version, and we're going to do a Sprint Standard Map. Uh, I'm going to start off by opening up that, uh, actually I'm going to be moving my downloads uh, into today's file. Now let's get some stuff set up. Uh, I always like to just use UTM. It keeps things easy and I like to declare things right off the hop. All right, so I've got my OpenStreetMap base map in. Uh, this just helps me set up all my georeferencing and then I don't actually touch any of this data um, I like to draw things from scratch because it's just not quite reliable enough at a sprint standard scale. Now my ortho photos here are still taking a while to download uh, because they're very high resolution and I'm downloading four of them at once. So we're in a bit of a holding pattern right now. Uh, so I guess I can start getting some LiDAR processing stuff ready to go. I have a network error. That's very unfortunate. Okay, I'm gonna run over to Firefox and I will use Firefox to do this. All right, and we'll just go one at a time for now. Um, and hopefully that won't overload things. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna prep some things for uh, just kind of keep my, uh, all my data clean. So I'll add an imagery folder and a LiDAR folder into my project folder here. Uh, inside of my LiDAR folder, I'm gonna want to just add my uh, processing uh, stuff. So I've got a set of my own PDAL based scripts that I'm using for base maps these days. Uh, and we'll see how that works once I have all my LiDAR downloaded. Uh, we are still trucking through this download, three quarters of the way through one tile. I probably should have done this before the stream, but this is the reality of how things work. Uh, 
All right, let's grab this file, Sage Kamloops School Pacific Way imagery extract. And let's start downloading the next one. Uh, yeah, we can have that. All right, so we've got that one image downloaded. So let's open that up. Um, it's a nice TIFF geo-referenced. Uh, I'll grab the referencing from the reference file and you can see how it beautifully lines up. Road turns into road, road turns into road, and everything is geo-referenced stuff just flat out works. Uh, we're gonna be downloading these next four, three tiles to complete our square. And in the meantime, I guess I'll just start on uh, some drafting. This is actually very interesting. Okay, I haven't done any sprint mapping in a while. So I'm gonna start out by drafting uh, some uh, lines along the edges of things. So I'll do probably some buildings, pavement edges, and I don't fill in any areas until I've got all the edge work done. Uh, okay, we've got image two ready to go. Sage Camelope School. Pacific Way imagery extract. And let's get number three. Awesome. So with uh, buildings, uh, I'm going to use the rectangle tool. And honestly, uh, it's in an out of bounds area. I just fill this in to add a nice kind of edge to the map. I don't care about adding any proper amount of detail to these buildings. At most, these buildings are gonna be seen from this side because I won't be mapping the road on this side. So actually I'll rough in right now, roughly where I'm expecting my map edge to be. Uh, and so that's gonna be something like this. I'll bring in some parcels later to figure out where exactly along the southern edge I'll go. Um, and so I'm going to just be duplicating a bunch of buildings that I've already drawn, or if it's an image number three. Kamloops School Pacific Imagery. All right, so I'm planning on using kind of this purple line as my crop line eventually, so I don't wanna go any further on drawing those buildings. These ones here, just the back little edge is gonna show up inside of my map file, so I'll pull it in for now. Uh, you can see down in the bottom left of my screen here what my key uh, presses are. So I'm using mostly the keyboard shortcuts because it's much faster than navigating up to the tools on the top bar. Double click issues. Hey, and there's image four, excellent. Kamloops School Pacific Imagery. All right, and now we start grabbing the LiDAR, which they've also got very nicely tiled here for me, which is nice. Uh, we'll just go one by one again. All right, now that we've got all of my imagery in, I'll take a quick pause on the buildings and let's open up the rest of those images. Uh, I have 5154A open right now, so let's grab the other three.
Okay, right, there is nicely looking. So this fence along the edge here is going to eventually be the edge of my map. Uh, where exactly the edge will be on this side, I'm not sure. Um, this here is a, a fire hall. Um, so I won't want people heading into here, but I'll probably map it just to add some detail to the edge. And it's also public property. So um, I'm going to continue my building drawing around the edge of the map. And again, I'm not caring about my deed. There's LiDAR 1. Uh, I'm going to extract that. Let's see. Wow, I should probably just like go to my recent, so I'll be much faster. Um, yeah, I'll just throw it in here. Extract. Close. Let's grab my next tile. I think I downloaded that one, but I don't actually remember. Uh, 5154A. That is a different thing, so let's go to that. All right, so again, back to buildings. I'm not really caring about the shapes too much, but roughly correct is good. And roughly, the, I'm having some issues with my mouse double clicking. Roughly, the correct orientation is also helpful. This building shape is the same as this one, so I'll just duplicate, bring it down, save a bit of time. Uh, because the, these building shapes are all the same, but the orientation changes, so it's just as fast to redraw them new. All right, so this is a bunch of brand new condos that didn't exist in the imagery I looked at earlier. So it's a good thing there's uh, some newer city imagery. I don't want to map these. There's a nice fence that runs all along the edge. Uh, and so I'm not going to be sending any participants through here because it's a private area. So I will just adjust my edge of map plan accordingly. So you can see the corner on the edge of the fence there. And so again, I'm not going to be too picky about any of these building shapes because it's just going to be an out of bounds area. But I do want it to be reasonably nice because I'm a perfectionist like that. Uh, a realist at least. Uh, recent Pacific Way LiDAR extract. Close. Let's grab another LiDAR tile to download. Okay. Oh, and I should save my map file at some point. So I'm going to do that now. Uh, Kamloops School Pacific Way. That's going to be good enough for that building. Uh, I feel like... Interesting. Okay. Uh, the preview icons are a little bit different from the last time I used the symbol set. So... Three tiles in, so I'm still missing one. That's probably this one. Okay. All right. Uh, so I've got kind of the buildings around the outside of my map. Uh, well, I guess I've been missing a couple blocks here. So let's finish those off, and then we'll move on to some pavement edges around the outside. I always like to kind of map the edges of my map first uh, because it serves as there well it's not very critical to the map functionality uh, and so it serves as a bit of a warm-up for the the real deal of the core of the map
So I think this uh, cell infiltration here is a canopy, so I'm not going to map it with the building symbol. Um, that looks like it is legitimately like that. And then we'll just pull that out to the little angle. Very nice. And we are have our LiDAR sorted out. Recent Pacific Way LiDAR extract. Okay. Um, we're going to take a break from map drawing ever so briefly, and we're going to process our LiDAR out. So you can see our map file is remarkably boring at this point, with some buildings around the outside, and roughly the shape of the map that we're going to have. So I'm going to throw this up into the corner. I'm going to grab a terminal, and you can watch as my performance tanks, and then even watch the core temps of my PC. Uh, so I'm going to just be using a little script that I've written out um, to process some LiDAR. Uh, it uses a PDAL base, which is totally open source. Uh, I opened the wrong terminal location, so it's faster this way. I want a two meter contour base map. Oh, and this is a great way to go. What do I got? Ah, I got my last X files that I don't actually want. And so I didn't program it particularly well to deal with that. So. This is going to chug through. You can see down here in my system monitor in the bottom right that it's a single core process. I think. Um, so right now I'm generating a digital elevation model. So it's taking the LiDAR data, taking just the ground points uh, from that data set and uh, creating that surface model of the elevation in, across the entire four tiles. Uh, after that, it's going to generate a bunch of contours based on that DEM. And then also some, uh, there's my contours done as well as some slope shade stuff. And then I'm also processing just a simple height above ground map uh, to figure out how tall vegetation or anything that's not right on the ground surface is in any given spot. So depending on the LiDAR quality, I'll also be able to pick up some fences uh, and some other stuff like that. Um, if the LiDAR is low quality, it'll be basically, here's where a building or a tree is. And so once this output's done, we'll head back to our map, add these templates in, and um, continue along with the mapping. So with uh, the height above ground calculations, it's taking that previous uh, ground point figuring out from the earlier steps and it's also figuring out the highest point at every given spot on the map. It's comparing the two and then it's saving that to a new dimension and then it'll uh, map that dimension onto a nice image file that I can bring into the map file. Uh, so while this is processing in the background, uh, I'm going to just bring in uh, the, some of the ground based stuff. So the slope shade's the one that I really want. Um, and so it kind of gives me a nice idea of, it, it has some false illumination from the south pointing north. And so you can see where the steep areas, the smooth areas are. Um, and so I can see like straight away that I'm gonna have a nice uh, impassable wall right here with the big black line, some steeper hills over here. We able to pull out these trails here um, there's a trail cut into the hillside here. And this ladder doesn't look like it was super high quality, um, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it'll be good enough. I can even pick up the little 15 centimeter curbs of the pedestrian islands on the roundabout here. Uh, I'm still processing my other base maps, so I'm gonna grab uh, um, some, I'm gonna create a new map file uh, for my contour base map because I don't like merging it into my main map file. 
Uh, I'm thinking about, I'll go here. This will bend, this one will work. So that's, I'm again gonna use my same OpenStreetMap uh, template to set up my georeferencing. It doesn't matter whether I declinate this or not, but I might as well. And then I'm gonna start importing my newly processed contours based off the LiDAR. Uh, let's just go through the recent option again. So I'll pull in my 10 meter index contours, uh, which I'll call this. It doesn't matter that my symbol name is different. Um, two meter. My main, no, file, import. And then the half meter helper contours. So this is roughly my map area. So I've got way too much data here. So just to kind of keep some file sizes reasonable, I'm gonna just like way exceed my regular area, but I'm gonna trim it down to just what I'm, in, roughly what I'm interested in. All right, and then I'll clear my redo undo history by deleting a symbol and I will save this uh, Pacific way contour base map save and I'm gonna decheck that and just to make sure that that works out I'll save there delete save excellent opening up that Pacific way contour base map and now I've got my contour base map in um, I could import these contours directly but I prefer to hand draw most of my contours uh, it's just better smoothing than the algorithms have. Car to Palatin has pretty good contours, but it's just not worth it um, for a map of this size to run it through there. It looks like my vegetation processing is all done. I've not written a little message. Uh, so this is the colors that you're gonna see in the picture that I bring in. So stuff that's yellow is gonna be right around uh, ground height. So it'll be like pavement grass, and then kind of shrubby stuff will be red stuff that gets above your head will start to turn green and then as stuff gets taller it'll transition through a blue into a black so let's grab that image now of my height map uh, output canopy height all right so you can see i've got some trees down on this end um building uh but this isn't actually going to be too helpful today because it's not super high quality, so I'm barely picking up. You can see there's probably what's a fence here, um, but I mean, we can throw things. Uh, see, yeah, so the, the LiDAR agrees that there is this fence, that, but the imagery shows it better. So uh, those height maps are more important in forested maps typically than urban ones. Uh, we're gonna get rid of our contour map because it just gets in the way uh, for now as we draw some other urban symbols. So I'm gonna start off drawing a bunch of pavement edges. I just want this to look roughly like the sidewalk has the same width all along. Um, I'm not too fussed about it being perfect. Again, it's right on the edge of the map. Nobody should ever run here, but it should look semi-professional at least. It's always a balance in all orienteering mapping between the budget limitations of the people requesting the map and the time well, and, and the accuracy of the map, I guess, because the more time that you spend, the more that you're gonna be charging whoever wants the map. And so most people uh, who are ordering maps are not wanting every minutia to be perfect. They're wanting a functional product that they can use um, 
at a pretty good price point. Uh, so this looks like it's kind of more of a back alley thing. So I'll, I'm torn about whether to continue this line along, and I think I'm actually not going to. So I, I could map, I, I haven't decided yet whether I'm actually going to map these fences here or not, or if my out of bounds area is going to head straight up to the edge of the sidewalk. I'm tempted to just do out of bounds straight to the edge of the sidewalk um, because there's not always a clear defined edge between what it should be private and inaccessible and what isn't unless I use that edge. So while this fence exists, it typically doesn't come right to the street. So. I'm going to just kind of continue along and to see what the rest of things look like before I make a decision. Looks like um, this one's actually a different shape from the rest of them, which is unfortunate, but I think I should be able to duplicate the other three. I guess I had never finished this sidewalk. Uh, should I do? No, I'm going to do this one first. So in all instances, I'm ending my objects a little bit past my purple line, and that's because I'm planning on using that purple line to crop the map later. And it's never worth it to have to go back and draw things after I want to be done. So it's better to just go a little bit further early and crop more out. That sidewalk's looking pretty good. I'm starting to see the edge of my map. So I've got a bit of a decision here because this is an unpaved path, um, but I'll just, I don't have the symbol for that brought in right now because it isn't well defined in the standard. whether this is like an unpaved gravel area or just dead grass because this is Kamloops so stuff is dry and it could very easily be dead grass that the city just didn't water or it could be uh, 
Uh, I didn't actually notice my imagery date. I wonder if it's in the metadata. Uh, imagery. Mm, I don't see it here. I wonder if the city had it. Published in 2018. June of 2020. Yeah, so in Canvas, it's totally possible that grass is dead. And that looks like grass, so I think, yeah, I'm going to call it grass. And that's looking pretty rough. Yeah, I'm going to call it like this. It'll be a little bit faster. I'm not too fussed about the fact that my curb here doesn't actually match up with the road. I'd prefer to take away from the road rather than take away from the edges. Nobody's going to notice if the road is 10 centimeters skinnier um, on the map than it is in reality. All right, I'm reaching that decision point where I have to actually decide what I want to do with these fences and out of bounds stuff. And I think I'm going to use. I think it has to be the fence. So let's map some trees in. Now I could double check these with my canopy height thing. So you can see it's got the extra little splotches where those trees are. And it lines up with the imagery pretty nicely. So I'm not too fussed about any distortion in either of them. Um, let's clean that up just a bit. Uh, no trees. Uh, I'm thinking that's a little bolder that I'm going to map. I don't think that's going to be big enough to map as a boulder, even if it is a boulder, and the shape doesn't look quite right. Now you might be wondering why I haven't brought in any Google Street View. And uh, the answer to that is that while I won't confirm that I use it usually, uh, the terms of service on Street View is actually that you just use it for looking at and you're not allowed to put it in stream at all. So that's why there's no Google Street View use on stream. So I've decided to go with the fence option. And here, like, that's down to like, I don't know, like a foot and a half between the fence and the pavement edge. So I'm going to just simplify it. Uh, let's draw the rest of these fences in and then we will I'll simplify that one out too. It's not really as true as the other simplification, but I'm okay with it. Likewise, I'll simplify that one out. And I'm I'm gonna just map right up to the edge on this one. All right, we gotta start filling some areas in. So it's a smooth open ground on our boulevards. decided that these were grass and if they're not grass I think it'll still be fine with smooth open ground so 
Now there's a bunch of mailboxes through here and because there's a, normally I wouldn't map any mailboxes but because there's so many in such a long row it actually does start to impact runnability. So I'm going to throw a building symbol across it because you won't be able to run through those and I think that's probably as appropriate as it gets. I definitely don't want to use an X for this because it doesn't solve any of the runnability problems and it makes a mess uh, of legibility to boot so it's not worth it. So I'm seeing, starting to see a bit of scrub through here so I might have should have Maybe I should have gone olive green um, and kind of gardeny stuff. It looks very similar to what's in the center of the traffic circle, which I definitely want as olive green. Oh, and I missed a treat. Um, so I haven't. I think I'm going to just go rough open ground behind this, though. I will be having somebody walking around and doing a little bit of field work, um, but ninety percent or so of the mapping should be done sitting at my desk here. Oops. All right. Mark Nixon. Hey, Mark, from the UK, I believe. Uh, olive green for the mailboxes. An interesting mm -hmm. choice. Uh, my brain with olive green, I guess, wouldn't interpret the sight line issues that the mailboxes would have. The mailboxes in Canada are like meter and a half to two meters tall. So the olive green, I mean, I could, but I think the building is probably more applicable. I haven't decided what to do with this bridge either. Because I don't, well, I don't want my contours. I'm just going to keep it simple. You know, just get that. I'm not going to map it as if you can go underneath it. You can kind of start to see the edge of a map taking shape now that we've got some area symbols starting to come in. I missed a couple buildings here. And I decided I was just going to bring olive green right to the pavement edge on this one because of the inconsistency of this fence. If it was in the middle of the map, I would take more care, but I'm I don't think it's worth it for the, the client for me to spend another two minutes on making that look prettier. All right, let's keep on trucking around.
All right, so my plan here is I'm going to just map this edge around next, and then we'll see where I'll probably do these condos after that. So I know that this doesn't look great. I'm going to come back and tweak it afterwards. I find it is a little bit faster to often just draw these pavement symbols to begin with and then make any small tweaks after as needed. sidewalk width is looking relatively consistent. I'm happy enough with that. It's looking like there's a pretty big rock right here, but I need a bit of space between the fence and it. And that little notch I don't care about. Big rock, little rock. Actually, gonna flip. Uh, I'm not gonna map this road in because from the other side of this fence, you're not even gonna be able to see it. But I'm gonna adjust my trim line a bit. Um, yeah, that's not getting in the way of anything, so let's just leave it. see my slope shade. Yeah, so I got a big impassable wall through here. Just in case, I'm gonna try this in. I guess I could do the other side of this road. I don't really want to do that yet because of these fence issues. I'm actually going to just jump straight into the more fun stuff around the school.
trying to decide if there's a rock there or not. That's not helping me much. One tree, two trees. Yeah, just two. Sorry, two or three was what I was trying to say. Um, it's not particularly to standard, but the North American swing sets, I have no idea if they have these in other countries, actually. I can't remember seeing any uh, abroad, but I like to map it with a power line. And I also like to use a defined edge for anything like this. And I just throw X's in roughly the right spots for playground stuff. Um, that looks to me kind of like those are the bulk of the everything. And it looks like it's a gravelly base, so I'll go with the, this guy. Uh, if I'm feeling really on top of things later, I'll come back and I'll cut out. Oh, I can do it now, I guess. I'll be a good, a good mapper. Cut a bunch of holes in it. Because like right now where the, the black of the dots matches up with the X's, it has a bad impact on legibility. So I'll just fill in So I should get the point across that it's the, the nasty runnability of a sandy-ish area, and then also it gets the legibility of where the features are across. All right, I've got a building here. If I was a gambling individual, I'd bet that's a canopy. Um, but and I got some portables and some fences. I'm gonna go with the portables first. This looks like it's a wheelchair access ramp here, and I'm gonna argue you can't get through that space because it looks like it's also fenced on this side, and so that makes my life quite a bit easier. There's another wheelchair ramp, and uh, I'm actually gonna swap out my symbol set because uh, there's a A bunch of custom symbols that I have for matching minimum distances that I believe should be in here. Yeah. Uh, I'll get rid of my layout symbols right now. So I kind of want to use this guy as the minimum width for this. Oh, my. Uh, my stream is down.
Oh, hey, sorry about that. I believe I'm back. This is my first time trying anything like this, so there's bound to be some hiccups along the way. I think my stream actually probably stayed up throughout that, and it's just my tablet, which is where I'm watching the stream, uh, that's having issues. Looks like my staircase on that side. Uh, I mean, I want to draw this fence in first. And I'm intentionally drawing the fence uh, so that it's on the inside of this corner rather than the middle of the fence being in the middle of the line. And that's because I need the space between the building and this fence uh, to get my legibility, I think, in here. I'm just going to tweak those corners a bit. I just think I'm going to ignore the fact that there's an extra line in here. I don't think I'll be able to fit that in any reasonably legible manner. So I think the best solution is to just ignore it. Uh, again, I'll have somebody on the ground doing field work. And if they disagree with me, then we'll add the line back in. And we'll squish this building to the right a bit and squish that fence out a bit and distort the map. Stairs are probably spaced a little too close together, but it'll be close enough that I think it'll be okay. Ah, okay, thanks for the update, Mark. Um, yeah, so I don't have a dual monitor setup, which means that I'm watching the stream like everybody else is on YouTube, and I've got it on my fieldwork tablet on the desk next to me, and it lost its internet connection and told me the stream is down. So I had assumed that it was down for everybody, but it was just my tablet, so. All right, back to work. I think I need to deal with this mess first. So it, oh, and I, actually, I'm gonna add my out of bounds areas down here. say all of this is going to be so this is a dumpster on this end and I can see that there's a fence and I'm reasonably certain there's a wall I guess I should double check with some well maybe there isn't a wall what's my slope shade looking like it doesn't have anything but I think that's like a concrete barrier wall as opposed to a retaining wall which is the more typical sort of wall and BC. The key point is that I want to show that there's no possibility through here anywhere um, and you have to go around. Any more detail than that is kind of just bonus. Um, yeah, that's probably not going to be visible, but it'll be close enough. Uh, yeah, let's go through these parking lots. Now, my fence symbol here is actually covering up the fact that there's some grassy area. So my plan is I'm gonna basically shift this entire edge of the parking lot a couple meters this way on the map. Um, and that will show that grassy bit of it. So I'm actually just gonna draw that now as if it's in the right spot and then I'll move it. I think that should be fine. Again, I, I want the passability uh, in here, and I'm only a little bit, this is the minimum width between two impassable objects, so I could squish it in a bit that way, which might actually be beneficial at this point. Yeah, and then I can squish this a bit. 
Uh, this isn't an impassable object, so I don't have to respect this minimum distance, but I find that it is nice to um, back out to the road so I'll leave that end for now. Now the issue is because I chose to make that distortion here I'm gonna to have to maintain that distortion in the map continuing up into this parking lot and I'll be able to fix some of it with this indentation and then at the top of the parking lot the rest of it will get rectified out. And so because of that distortion, I'm actually gonna need to draw this edge up first. Now it looks like there might be some, like, I, I can clearly see there's some weird height stuff along the sides. And I believe it's just like a railing based on this shadow. I can't see it in the grass as much, but the concrete stuff is the same. So I'm gonna assume that there's a passable railing on both sides of this fence. And it'll be easy to switch it out uh, after my fieldwork person goes through if we need to. Um, there are the pre-built stairs symbols and I'll use one here just for the spacing, but I, I don't like using them. Uh, I guess I'm just a control freak. I'll get rid of that. Right, and so I'm kind of solving half of that uh, mapping discrepancy and distortion. And then the other half is just kind of solved along the width of the parking lot. have anything else to map inside of this area so I'll fill in this big light standard in the middle is not a mappable object fenced off space might be a utility thing on the right hand edge of it I'm not really sure but at any rate nobody should be getting in there uh, three rocks I could map that yeah I might as well let's go with it again not perfectly to standard but I find I can get away with a rocky triangle if I'm and also next to another rock. Technically I need two of those for a boulder area, but I've never really, on a sprint standard, found that to be particularly worth following. I definitely got a gap in the fence there. I didn't see any others. All right, let's grab a quick peek at our map. So it's starting to get a bit of shape coming along. Um, you might be wondering why I haven't drawn my contours yet. And that's because I find they just get in the way uh, when I map them at this point. Um, they obscure stuff behind them and I always have to push 
a lot of fences and retaining walls out of the way from where they actually are. And that means that if I draw the contours early, I have to adjust them all later to match where those distorted areas are anyways. So on a sprint map, I just draw my contours at the end uh, after everything else is drafted. On a forested map, I do it completely the opposite way and contours are the most important thing. And so I draw them first. So you might notice that my pattern with uh, drawing in the area objects is that once I have all of my edge work done and all of the point symbols within that area done, then I just draw my area in and it's done and it's completed. Um, and so I, I won't draw any of this area in because I still have lots of edge work still to do on it. All right, let's do this little interior piece. I might actually visit the school website very shortly, uh, see if I can find it, because I wanna know if this is a canopy. And often they have a picture of the front of their school, which appears to be from this side. I don't think that's a canopy. This looks like a storage box. And I bet there's a canopy along this side. There's a little one in here, but that's one of the realities is that I just won't be able to pick out the canopies particularly well. Um, on a forest standard map, I wouldn't be mapping these picnic tables. Here I will be. Um, you just kind of want all the features you can get on a school map that are reasonable and not moving. Those are a picnic table on a concrete pad, so it's not moving either. It's, it's a fixed location picnic table. Anything that moves shouldn't be mapped. genuinely am curious what in the world this thing is but it based on the shadow uh, you can easily jump into it I just don't know what what it is likewise these little guys I don't think are going to be relevant enough to map say it's got a sandy interior. It's got a little more texture than a paved area, I think. Whoops. sure what to do about those ones. I'm gonna wait. All right, I don't think I can get away with uh, not drawing that school unless I go do the ball diamonds. So let's go do the ball diamonds. Decisions on where access is to the ball diamonds. I think I'm going to be mapping them out of bounds. Um, I'll let this cut through here be okay. 
Like there's, although that has obviously used by the public quite frequently. I know you'll be able to get in from the dugouts. Two. I'm not seeing any gaps in the. Well, is there one? No, I don't think so. So that was there. And I, I think this, it, like the, you can see the fence posts are different here. So there's clearly a gate. It happens to be closed, but this one over here is open. And there is like a trail that cuts straight to it. So I'm gonna map it as if the public can open it, I think is the right way to go. The other option is to map all of the baseball diamonds as out of bounds. Um, but I think this will work better. I want it to be quite a bit bigger than this. Technically, I could use the crossing point as an optional thing. Um, they really expanded the width on the crossing point in the last revision, and I, I found it very hard to use that symbol since then. Um, with these two different areas, I could call this paved and this smooth open ground, but I kind of like calling both of them smooth open ground. I, don't really have a good logic behind that. Uh, other than that, it's just how I've done a lot of other maps in this city, and so I'm just gonna stick with that. But I will draw in a distinct cultivation boundary. Uh, it's my cheater symbol for this sort of thing. Um, just to kind of show that this is very clearly a ball diamond. And so I've intentionally brought this back from its true edge just so it doesn't interfere with the edges of the, my fence. I could have my fence pointing outwards in most areas through here, but then I run into an issue anytime I'm encountering one of these fences or the dugouts, and so I just am going to consistently point them inwards. I have actually been completely ignoring my my uh, what buttons I've been pressing in the bottom left hand corner. I was worried that it was going to be distracting for me, but it turns out I never look at this corner. Trying to figure out, okay, that is a couple people on the field and a few more over here. I'm not sure what all of this junk is though. That's just weak spots in the grass, but this looks like fairly dedicated somethings. 
I really don't know. Um, to cut still. should be going paved area on that <laughs> I'm second guessing myself now yeah I, I think I probably actually should be let's do that uh, switch those symbols I know it doesn't look any different but it did switch the symbol figure out what to do with these dugouts um, before I draw anything else. There's always a question of whether to map them as a canopy or a building. So I, I know that there has to be a way in, but they're often gated off. Um, and so I'm, I think I'm going to go with the building route. Uh, undoubtedly they're not accessible from this side and one of these two ends uh, and then sometimes they'll have a connection in on here and one end but I I can't tell that from just vertical imagery so we'll go with the building option and again on the field work stage if we decide that it's important to show that you can get into those because you can get into those then we'll just switch the symbol very quickly uh, it's just a quick click so uh, these little bleachers there's a question recently on how to map these bleachers on the, uh, the Facebook mapping group and I don't actually know what other people I don't know what they ended up deciding how I've always mapped it is something like this uh, but I'm thinking that this so basically you want to get the point across that at the top edge you can't jump over them and that there's kind of a general stair shape and that will be recognizable to people in the terrain uh, and then it's a paved area in here I'll duplicate that for my other set of bleachers over here and I'm wanting to maintain this kind of distance here if I can. Again, I don't have to actually maintain that distance. I think it's only this distance that I have to maintain, but I really want to get that point across. It does mean I'll have to be tweaking this trail when it gets drawn, but that's fine. There were a couple other things of bleachers over here, but I can't. Uh, it's a different size than this, so I won't be able to duplicate the symbol and I'll just have to redraw it. Again, not to standard, but I like to use the power line symbol to draw uh, goalposts on school maps. All right, I think that probably is good enough for my ball diamonds. Let's fill in. this hillside is going to be interesting. Uh, that will be by far the most challenging section to map from a desk not being there. 
All right. I think we should map these fences along the edge of this road. Now, this fence is so close to the edge of this sidewalk that I'm actually going to just ignore the foot and a half grassy section between the two and just simplify it down to this. Uh, I, that's very poor construction, I guess. Where does this road start to turn? I think it's here. Now, although I do have an impassable wall that starts to show up here, I also still have the fence on top. So I think I'm just going to be continuing with the fence symbol all the way along. And that will be as good as it gets. Uh, when the contours get drawn and the contours merge in with the fence and then disappear, it'll be clear that there will also be that drop. And I'm, I'm aware that I covered up the gap in the fence earlier. Uh, I did do that intentionally just to make the angles look nice coming out of it. And then I'll head back and I'll open that gap back up. All right, and map is starting to look pretty good. Uh, I'm going to add my curbs on kind of my major roadway. Uh, I'm going to continue this curve across. Yeah, I'll continue this curve across. Wow, I am not getting this shape right at all. That's better. I have a straight section here. So th again, this is a fire hall building, so it will be mapped out of bounds. So I'm not too picky about a lot of the details right in here, but I do want to show the general shapes to be correct because I'm planning on using the temporary out of bounds symbol uh, rather than olive green across the entire thing. This kind of garden area here, I will make olive green though. pretty bad. That looks better. All right, so this is starting to get out to a significant width here. So it's always awkward when you need to simplify and then have it come out because there isn't like this defined point here, but you kind of make do. I do want this to be a bit straighter once it joins. And so, yeah, there is a bus stop with a little bench here. While I do map the picnic tables on both sides, uh, when you think about a picnic table compared with a bench, a picnic table is like two benches and a surface in between. So it's way bigger than this bench. And so I don't map the single benches on almost all of my sprint maps. Uh, 
It's just not significant enough. Likewise, I could map this little paved area to the fence, and yeah, sure, I might as well. It doesn't hurt the legibility, so I, I can do that. I don't need to, though. There's something going on along here. It looks like it's a bunch of rocks, but I want to check some. Yeah, so it's looking like it's pretty steep along this edge. Um, I think I'm going to go... Yeah, that's probably not a great solution. Yeah, I can't say I'm a big fan of that solution, to be perfectly honest. I can't really think of anything better. So if you've got something better in the chat, I am all ears. I, I don't think it comes out of the ground significantly. I could just switch to a rocky ground, but I just kind of want something to show that there's some rocks. Um, up here, I think I am going to map these three trees that I couldn't decide about earlier. Um, and then there is a little boulder here that I think is worth mapping, and it's going to have to get squished to the outside so that the legibility works out. So this is the minimum distance between a black, between any two objects of the same symbol. So between two trees, between two black things like a boulder and a fence or whatever. Um, all right, so I guess I can fill this in. Something happening there. I'm not sure what that is. I'll come back to it. Uh, yeah, that's all my enclosed areas. Um, I'm going to take a super quick break and go grab a drink, and I'll be back in like a minute and a half.
Oh yeah, I'm back. Sorry for the delay. I was like three and a half minutes based on how long I remember my animation was. All right, let's finish off this park and school. Uh, so I do have a little gap between these. Wait. Oh, yep, I'm back. Okay. So I'm just going to adjust where the these lines show up so that I can clearly show that there's a cross ability between these two impassable fences. I uh, got some bleachers to draw. Um, I've also learned during my break that there are a bunch of comments on attack point, uh, which was the only promotion that I did for this. It was a bit of a spur of the moment decision on whether it would actually happen. Um, I do not have attack point open for monitoring in front of me. I don't have enough screen real estate. So it's much easier for me if you say stuff here as opposed to there because unfortunately I won't be interacting with any comments on attack point till after this stream is over. All right, I'm gonna grab the school website, see if it's got a nice picture of this area, because I wanna know if this is a canopy or not. Um, so, quick bit of Googling. Well, actually, duck, duck, go, but you know, the verb is to Google when you're searching things. Uh, I believe this is school district 73. All right, let's go to the map route and see if they've got their, uh, there we go. Okay, I do have a picture, it's not, from the side that I was looking for. So this is looking from the field. You can see the, the bleachers there. So that's looking from like in here, looking up at this side of the building. So, well, and it's in part of a rotating cycle. So just got it. So there's no overhangs on this side that are worth mapping. So that's good to know, but I kind of want to know if there's anything that I can see from the other side. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing anything, so I'm going to just gamble, and I'm going to say that this little space is a canopy, and that nothing else really is except for along this entire edge of the school. I can see that there's kind of something black that happens here, so I think this space is a canopy. And again, field work will fix any issues that happen here, but it's still worth, oh, see, I've got my angle a little bit wrong. Uh, so I'll go with the longest straight edge first, and that will help my fixed angles to work a little bit better. So I think it's probably this little roof, subroof color uh, that is going to be the difference between canopy and not canopy. That's my gambling intuition. I think this big steel storage box uh, is probably a thing. They tend to live around the schools for an extended period of time. All right, I'm gonna pull this out to where that road will be. Very nice. I'm going to want to use this line. I, I just like making things orthogonal. So I'll s use this line here and then hold control to fix the angle so it's parallel to that. And then I'll draw it to where it should end. I'll bring the end in and then I'll uh, hold shift to grab onto the end of this line. 
and then it's free floating, I can move it around, and I can hold control to lock to a 90 angle and draw it up to here. And then I can adjust that line directly. So basically all that's done is it mean, means that this is perfectly straight with this, which is the things that your eye will see. And then this is perfectly square with this as well. So it just, it's just a little bit, whoops, uh, tidier looking mapping. And nobody really notices other than that it kind of is a little bit eye pleasing uh, for the map. You don't really know why, but it just seems to to work. All right, that meets kind of a reasonable width. And then this paved area can get extended around. I'm not sure if I want to go all the way around. Yeah, I think I'm going to go all the way around the school with it. In that case, I'm going to just exaggerate it a bit. Suppose if this was June, it's possible that school was actually in session. Sorry, that imagery was taken in June, as we learned a little bit earlier. So it's possible school was still in session when this picture was taken. Um, schools around here stay in until like late June. Just trying to figure out why there's some people but not a lot of people. Um, it's just a little bit odd. Could be a weekend even, who knows. Uh, I was definitely too, this width looks good. Uh, a little bit too close. Okay, let's pull it out a bit. How is it on this side? Oh, significantly too close. So that. Yeah, okay, width is not a problem on this end. Oops, did I duplicate that? Oh, I didn't, okay. Let's flip that over sideways. Uh, it's looking like there's stairs not quite to the bottom, but for legibility purposes, it's honestly gonna be easier for everybody if I have stair a stair right at the bottom and right at the top. Um, this is also a long enough thing that I guess I should probably just use a pre-built one for time saving purposes. Alright, that's looking pretty good. like how that looks so even though it's not quite true I'm gonna pull it to the outer edge and that's just fine all right uh, this is all done that's done that's done so like my areas aren't done but all of my edge work is done which means filling this in well, I could do it in one click of a button, but I like a little bit more control than that. Um, oh, I wanted to change, that was part of the reason of switching out the symbol set was over here. I wanted to switch these to a, a dashed line just to symbolize that this is not a paved trail. 
Excellent. Let's grab over here, grab the other trail. Now this is offset because if you were here earlier in the stream, we had some distortion in here for legibility and it reverberates up the map to here. So this little grassy corner is going to get simplified out and we're going to pretend it's paved. It's just not worth mapping that a little bit of detail. Okay, so I know that this is a skateboard park, uh, a longboard park apparently, um, and that's from some pre-stream research, but I genuinely have never seen anything like this in person. I didn't realize that they built dedicated longboard parks. I knew like smaller skateboard trick parks were quite common, but yeah. I'm going to just map these condos first and then I'll deal with uh, the more important park hillside up here. So I'm just adding some, uh, I don't even remember what it's called right now, dash points, dash points to the corner of the fence. Uh, so that all just means that the ticks don't show up right at the corners but are inset and so it just improves the legibility. I'm not going to map any other detail in this condo area. Uh, I'm just going to call it olive green because, well, nobody's ever going to be in here and I don't want anybody going in here. Basically, they need to be able to see from the areas that they're in that there's a building and it's well fenced and that they shouldn't go on the other side of the fence. Mapping detail in olive green is just extra wasted effort. Uh, is this paved or is this gravel? Based on how rough the edges are, I'm going with it being gravel. Well, viewership is dropping rapidly. Oh well, it's a good thing that I'm mostly just here to do a bit of mapping and I happen to be streaming on the side. The only thing really different between this morning if I was streaming and if I wasn't streaming is that my map is or my mouth is a little bit drier because I'm talking more, but I think I'm just going to call this a little crossable fence. Oh, and that reminds me that I definitely saw, definitely saw a little crossable fence right here that I wanted to map. It's just a little gate. And I'm going to exaggerate its length out so that it gets a tick mark. Uh, oh. Hmm, I don't really like how that looks. Maybe I won't map that. Yeah, it'll be fine without it. All right, let's finish off this olive green area. Oh, and I wanted this to be the dad. Whoa, I don't want those connected. Cut and cut this, and this need to be dashed. All right. Uh, I'm actually going to have to draw in the top bit of this building. That's a bit of a nuisance. did get that mapped in properly. I'm still trying to decide if this is like a properly cut grass area or not. This is the sagebrush up here that Cantaloupes is famous for. Um, 
we don't actually have a great way to map it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, oftentimes it's just rough open ground, but I want to distinguish between like the rough open ground up here and the rough open ground with sagebrush. I don't want to go to white forest because that's over here. So it's probably going to end up being the undergrowth stripes is what I've kind of adopted. Uh, I'm going to call this a boulder cluster and then there's a bold right there. The other rocks I don't think are important enough to get mapped. There's something going on there. I'm going to say it's a boulder even though it looks square and unnatural. Uh, this looks like a picnic table. I'm betting this is like a shelter based on kind of where the shadow is falling. Uh, like on this edge here, it can't have a wall. So it's got to be a canopy. There's a fence through here, and that's paved. So I'm guessing this is supposed to be like a water collection marshy thing. Haha, <laughs> I didn't realize when I push and held space that uh, it just turns into that with my I just assumed it would give me a single space, but so be it. All right, so I got a little indistinct trail from up the hill. Looks like there's like something happening through here. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Now this is not gonna map well with how I've done this. So I'm gonna have to actually come back and tweak everything because this trail coming through is not gonna be legible. Okay, I think it's time for me to map what I believe is a seasonal creek through here. So I'm gonna grab my slope shade. Hey, that totally looks like a creek. And we will map that guy in. I've been doing way more forest mapping recently, so I'm not familiar with my icons on iSprom anymore, which is a little bit embarrassing to be honest. So that being the edge of a crossable water uh, pond type object. But... Oh, this does actually fit. Let me just move this guy a little bit. And that should apparently be legible. slope shade. Let's pull this guy right up to that corner. Nice. And you can see how my slope shade actually lined up really nicely with how this imagery is looking. Looks like I have a tree right here. I can't tell which side of the creek, so let's go right in the middle. There's also a tree there, but my canopy height will probably show it quite nice. And yeah, you can see that this thing here is way taller than all the sagebrush, which is showing up in the, in the red color. So I have a tree here, and then I've also got a tree here. It's harder to see in the imagery, so that's part of why I like to bring the canopy height in, just to kind of make things a bit easier. All right, I think it's time to kind of figure out my southern edge of the map. So that's going to be this uh, passable fence, but I'm going to map the uphill side of it as olive green everywhere uh, because I'm at least I think that's what I'm going to do. If my memory serves, it's a private land ownership up here and the edge of the park is through here. I could go bring in a parcels layer, but I don't actually know how to do that without 
showing my email. I'm not about to do that on stream. And I don't think it's critical for me to do it either because I think this is a perfectly adequate map area as is. Let's actually just see how big of an area it is. So if I export this or pretend to, uh, letter size sheet, single page, landscape. So it's yeah, a little bit on the smaller end of things um, because it's going to be just used for junior programs and some school stuff. Um, I can cheat and change the map scale and uh, teachers will probably like a one to three thousand version of this and I think that'll be fine. I'll have room for a legend and some control descriptions and some branding. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the size and shape of this map when it comes to printing. I could map this, I guess, with uh, the set width uh, pre-built symbols. I actually just didn't think of it. Um, I virtually never use them because I find they're much harder to use effectively because very rarely does something have a consistent width and it's then hard to integrate uh, the set width symbols with kind of the custom symbols. But because this is a consistent width, it actually would have been a good option. And then I would have only had to have merged right down here where it juts out a little bit. Okay, interesting shapes. I've got some trails to draw in. I think I'm just gonna use a footpath symbol here. I'm gonna end it a little bit before the fence so that it doesn't bleed the black color into the fence at all and then fringe on that legibility. And I'm going to actually continue it right to this edge because I think that's actually fairly applicable. I'm missing this is going to get mapped. I have not decided how this is going to get mapped. It's like there's very clearly trails through here. But what do I want to call distinct and what do I want to call indistinct? This will be distinct. That will be distinct. That will too probably means I should have mapped the upper part of this one as being distinct. Uh, just give me one moment. Alrighty, and I am back. Um, 
down. Alrighty, that's looking pretty good. How does the upper edge of this trail work? I think I'm going to call this one distinct. I'm going to call it distinct going this way, because to me that's where the majority of this trail goes. And I think that actually is going to be in a culvert through there. So I'm going to cut. And if I grab the slope shade, you can see how it kind of disappears for a little while. I think it's in a culvert. So I'm going to cut this creek back, and that'll be a little bit better. Uh, let's grab, uh, let's make this distinct here. So that looks like a pretty distinct junction to me. Well, that looks kind of rough. Let's grab that there. And this, well, I'm not sure yet. Okay, that's starting to look good. I'm, I'm intentionally not mapping my vegetation yet because if when I just map, I'll map the vegetation in this upper section last um, I, because I haven't quite decided how I'm going to do all of it yet. Uh, that being said, when I do notice like some obvious trees, well, I guess not so obvious trees that are mixed in with the sagebrush, I have mapped a few of them. And this was where, when we were mapping this bleacher, we knew we had to mess around with this trail a little bit. So I'm going to start the distortion a little bit early so that when I arrive in the right spot, the shape of the trail is still appropriate. Now in places where there's a lot of trees, you can also use some Strava heat map data to figure out where trails go. I've never really been able to figure out their terms of service, whether exactly how legal that is. Um, I'm not a lawyer. Don't take any of this as legal advice. All right, so this is a little bit challenging to figure out. I'm gonna grab my slope shade and see if it gives me any clues yeah, so I can kind of see that there's a bit of a flattening right through here, but I knew that anyways from my imagery. Um, and I'm, like with higher quality LiDAR, I can those trails really pop, but it's not doing a great job of that here. I'm going to guess it's something like this. Okay, and maybe actually there's a creek in here and that can, yeah, not really. Oh, but there's definitely this thing coming through. I'm gonna map that. I don't actually think I'm gonna map that out with a ride. How do my contours look? Yeah, it'll show up in the contours, and I don't think there's anything else on the ground. And I find the ride symbol to be quite confusing for newcomers. Um, is that an indistinct trail running down there? Yeah, maybe. I don't think there's enough of one, though. Alright, so I'm on to mapping the back of the fire hall. How's this looking? 
All right, so I definitely have an impassable object along here, which is actually really nice because it means that nobody's going to get stuck uh, heading into the fire hall. It looks like it would be crossable through here, but I think I can get away with calling it impassable all the way around. And then I've got a. Well, let's get rid of those contours out of the way. We'll tweak the edge of the map here to be in the middle of this building. And that'll just make things a little bit cleaner. I'm going to say that it's private. Uh, yeah, that'll work. This will all be some, that shape looks atrocious. Should continue to curve nicely. All right. Bunch of olive green. Roughly into here. Nice. Um, these little utility boxes, uh, I sometimes map them, sometimes I don't. When I do map them, I give them a minimum size building. But in any case, I try and be consistent across the entire map uh, if I do map any of them. This garden area is going to just get mapped all with green. Because I know that if I planted this garden, I wouldn't want anybody running through it. All right, so I kind of got all the edges of my map done. I have a bunch of vegetation to fill in here, but I'm gonna fill in my smooth open ground areas up here first, and then probably run through my rough open ground, and then I'll deal with the vegetation struggles uh, on the southern end. So. The other nice thing about filling in the, all the areas manually as opposed to using the just click and fill whoops, uh, is that you have a chance to double check that you didn't miss anything. Um, there are symbols that you can use or tools that you can use so like in a single click, well actually this won't work but because of the gaps in the fence. Uh, so it continued to fill out through these gaps and it runs all the way till it meets a border line. Um, so I tend not to use the fill tool very much. And also because like in all of the corners, anytime where there's like joining of line symbols, the, it's really messy and that makes it hard to edit later. So instead I use the path tool uh, with uh, shift, click and drag, um, which just makes things, uh, helps you to follow existing objects. Uh, and it's a little bit slower, but the results are better, so. All of a sudden, this map is looking fairly close to done. I've got some stuff over here to fill in. These clearly non-native trees that are planted along the edge here are all going to get mapped with individual tree symbols. Once I get up the hillside, I'm probably going to be onto more proper vegetation mapping. I 
have yet to decide what this mess of stuff is. And I, I don't, it looks like it's all fairly movable and unimportant. So I don't think I'm actually going to map any of it. I do want to show that there does appear to be a nice, easy way to run along the outside edge of the ball diamond. So I'm going to just map that with the smooth open ground to show that that's the case. And between the ball diamonds is great running. And another fairly sizable area done. All right, we have a bunch of road mapping to do. Um, with the latest revision of the sprint standard, they added the two different colors of pavement for the two different kind of how much traffic there is. Uh, so I'm gonna certainly call this major road and this road as having heavy traffic. I haven't decided on this road yet. Um, like it's serving a fairly large base uh, of houses, but it's going to be much less than this. I think I'm going to call it uh, the busy pavement and go with the dark color for it. Uh, what's my best way to do this? Yeah, I guess I can continue up. And so again, I'm drawing all this in with the path tool, which is the, the little, whoops, uh, the little squiggly S up here. And then I had a little bit of tidying up work to do in here. So I'll just cut some holes in that object. little pedestrian islands which should not be heavy traffic now we're going to get filled in I don't know the keyboard shortcut for the cutout, which is why my mouse is going up to the top. It'd probably be good for my mapping speed if I learned it, but I haven't yet. And I don't think it's also called the cutout tool. I think it's like XLR or something, because cutout and cutaway is a different set of tools. This is actually one instance where the fill tool probably would have been faster and better, but I neglected to use it, so I will make do. I enclosed this area, so I need to add a hole, and then I chose to draw this one separately. Now the reason I'm drawing these sidewalks with a different area symbol than the uh, where there's vehicle traffic is that it means that if somewhere down the line somebody decides that all roads with vehicle traffic um, should
should be the darker color. They'll have the flexibility to do that very easily just by switching the existing symbols and not having to cut any symbols. That was one thing I neglected to do was after I filled in my uh, smooth open ground areas, I need to cut away uh, so that because the smooth open ground color is above the rough open ground color, I just need to cut that symbol out of the overlapping areas. I guess I just broke my own rule there. Oh well. It's close enough. I suppose I could cut it now, make life easier for the next map editor. There we go. Two separate objects. Oh, and I wanted to call this section these sections rough open, so I'll do that right now. Okay, oops, and I made a mistake again with filling in areas, and so I just need to cut that out. Easy. Uh, one more, well, actually, no, I'm going to do this in two separate chunks. And that's why I don't have to cut out that middle area. <laughs> this is one place where following the edge of things is quite challenging. There we go. Okay, any trees down here? I'm thinking I've got a couple little trees in here. Let's grab my height map. Yeah, I've got a tree. Uh, yeah, I'm good with just calling that one tree. I'm not seeing anything else jumping out at me got a smooth open ground section through. Well, actually, I think I'm going to include this section. And I, like, th I haven't decided, I don't know. I think we're going to call it here. That's close enough. that 
has a tree as well. Uh, so this is also a tree. I haven't decided how to do it with this yet. Maybe I'll call it an indistinct marsh because it looks pretty seasonal. And I don't really want to call it the paved area. Give these ones tree status. So I'm, I'm not mapping anything that is sagebrush as a tree. So even though this is getting fairly tall, it's just going to continue to be called undergrowth. And that'll just be easier for any participants uh, on the map. I'll use the canopy height to roughly use to kind of aid my shape drawing here. All right. I missed a trail. Oh, and I missed a fence. That's the worst thing. Fences matter a lot. Trails change faster, so you can get away with them being a little bit less perfect. And that actually continues straight up, and that's actually really nice that that's the case. Again, creates a beautiful edge to the map means that with uh, the young junior programs and kids who will be using this, um, it'll be very hard for them to get out of bounds because the only place where they can squeak out is on this edge. So everywhere else the course setter will be able to um, very easily control the area of play. With how open the area is and generally being low to high from your main areas as well, you'll be able to see participants basically all the time, which is nice from an organization standpoint. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, and I yes, I am guessing on how dense that vegetation is, but I think it's a fairly good guess. Um, some of this is from being in similar terrain in person. And um, yeah, again, field work will fix mistakes that I make now. So I'm not too concerned if that does end up being light green. So I kind of got two chunks here. There's definitely this pathway through here. Um, and I'll probably just call that in between stuff white forest. Uh, maybe light green, let's go light green. And again, field work will fix issues if needed. Uh, I do want to add a few little trail dashes here. That looks better. Do I want that mapped? Yeah, I think this, I mean, imagery is two years old, so this could be gone or it could be there, and field work will get rid of it if it isn't, and if it is, then it'll be nice to have at the time that we do field work. Well, I'm kind of through the easy, well, I guess, uh, yeah, let's do the undergrowth for the sagebrush now. And then, because this is getting into a different forest type than over here, so. This is a dense section, uh, another dense section, and then we'll call all of this undergrowth. Yeah, that's close enough. That's why the thing with vegetation is that 
even professional mappers, honestly, they're just making it up as to what the vegetation actually is, and it's very, very subjective. Uh, I struggled for a long time with mapping vegetation, and then I just decided to uh, stop worrying and just go with it. So when there's just a few little bushes, it doesn't really impact runnability at all. So it's not getting any uh, undergrowth slash. And this will all get filled in with rough open ground. Um, it's just much easier to uh, draw now without that extra area symbol in the way. This looks like a denser section, so I'll just cut out some of this and I'll switch it to the denser one. Again, there's a denser section through here. No idea. I guess there's enough to call this slash. There isn't really, but whatever. That's all looking pretty good. I'm not mapping anything on the south side of the fence because I think I'm gonna just map it with olive green. Um, this should, I guess, maybe get this as well. Now this is the part that it's like, who knows without actually being there. Um, it's a lot of guesswork as to how to map this stuff. Uh, I think this section out here I'll map with individual trees, but then kind of this line across here, there's enough tree density that'll become worth it to map with the area symbols again. So um, the canopy height is my friend here for how big a tree is and how many there are. So there's two big trees, big tree. Uh, I think those are also big. That's little, little. I don't know which side of the trail that's on. It looks like this side. There's a tree, another tree. Do I want to call that a big tree? Oh, I'm totally missing a tree here. Yep. All right. Um. I'm gonna run for a quick bathroom break and I will be back in a minute and a half or so. And then we'll finish this little bit, draw some contours, some north lines, throw a quick layout on the map and we'll be good to go. See you shortly.
Alrighty, and I'm back. This is honestly my least part, least favorite part of uh, mapping remotely is kind of these big treat areas where I've got nothing. Uh, I could generate some Cartopilotin stuff and figure out based on it how dense the vegetation is, but uh, it's not really worth it because I'll just have somebody walk through it and do field work. So roughly my, all my goal is sitting at home is to get where there are trees and where there aren't trees. Um, this looks like there's trees. My canopy height also agrees with that. And I'm, it looks quite deciduous and like there's stuff down onto the ground. So I'm gonna guess that it's fairly dense. Uh, one moment. Alrighty, sorry about that. Oh yay, continuing to truck through vegetation. Uh, I, I'm seeing some like open area that connects through here. So I think this will get mapped with individual trees. Uh, no, I think it's actually going to get some scattered trees in this section. Um, let's go like that. There's, and the reason I'm going with the scattered trees is because I want to show that it's open, but there is young growth. This will get just plain old rough open. go to this edge here and I'll fill the other side with another symbol. I don't like to make these areas too, too big uh, if I can help it. It just makes editing easier and later. And then I'm going to need to cut up in here. Missing a tree. All right, so that looks pretty good where there's rough and where there isn't. Uh, my gut says that kind of over here where there's a bit of a re-entrant and stuff. Well, is this even getting a little cliffy? There might be a little cliff in there. It's hard to know. Um, and looking up here at the top, there's these little fence, po uh, uh, these fence posts are on like a created structure not dug into the ground, which means the rock is very close to the surface here but it doesn't quite look like bare rock. There's definitely still some grassy stuff on top. So a cliff in here is totally possible. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna write a few little notes for my person doing field work, uh, which is not me, because I don't live right here. And I'll just add a little cliff question mark, and it'll be something that they should absolutely go check out. And then I'll, I'll also be adding some instructions for them to kind of anywhere where there's these area vegetation symbols, I'll tell them that they need to check how dense the vegetation actually is. 
Because um, I can't say that I'm particularly confident about my vegetation map in here. Uh, what are these called? Yeah, so in these re entrants in round Kamloops, it tends to be wetter and therefore the vegetation tends to be denser. So I'm okay with calling that like that. And this looks like all Douglas fir type trees. I don't really see any pines in here. Well, it's possible there's a few pines, but there's nothing deciduous. So it's totally possible that the runnability under this section is much better uh, than in the wetter creek. Uh, well, not necessarily creek, but re-entrant, which collects water section. So I'll give it a lighter green color. Uh, all right, that leaves just a couple areas over here to do. I can grab this and just fill. And then this is a little bit more mathy. Mathy, that's not the word I was trying to come up with. My brain is starting to need lunch. Okay, so we've got like most of our map drafted. We have some contours left to do. So if you were here early in the stream, uh, we processed some LiDAR and got this uh, contour base map. Uh, let's get rid of the open street map, uh, which has a two meter main contour uh, layer, a 10 meter index contour, and then half meter in betweens. So I'm just gonna hand draft all my contours. Uh, let's grab the map. And I'll use the, I like to have the slope shade in the background. Um, when drafting contours, I don't really like to see everything. So I'll often go to view and then uh, I think it's not baseline, the other one, uh, hatch. And so it keeps all my line symbols the same so I can match legibility up with them nicely. But then the, just the visibility is much better. So the trick is to not miss any contours. So I'm gonna start in the upper corner of my cropping area. And that looks pretty good. Index contour matching up with my pre-processed base map index contour. And a good rule of thumb is that if it doesn't show up on multiple different contours, uh, of the half meter variety, it's not a feature that you should be mapping. It's below a mappable scale. And while the LiDAR doesn't lie, it shows way more than the typical orienteer or even the atypical uh, will be able to pull out when running at competition speed or walking for that matter because the print just isn't good enough. So like this one here is obviously a thing. It shows up along a whole bunch of contours for this re-entrant. This one here, it only shows up on one with a little knock on two. So I'm actually just not gonna map it. It's not, unless I see something uh, in the imagery. Uh, shoot. Yeah, and like it does exist. Uh, it's a hard decision. I'll, I'll add a subtle one. I am, so I'm outside of my pink line, so I should just save time and effort and not be drawing those things. That's the main reason why you draw the pink line is to prevent you from mapping outside of areas. And so I shouldn't have bothered wasting time mapping, deciding on that one or not, because it's outside of my competition area. This is gonna be in an olive green. 
Alrighty, that contoured. Well, I guess I'm gonna need to draw these in. Oops. One of the key points with drawing contours is you need to make everything curvy. You don't want to do straight lines uh, because uh, I'm even getting some curves into my straight line attempts because um, it just looks choppy. And even if you use lots of little straight lines, it doesn't it doesn't look good when it's printed. Um, it's hard for people to figure it out. But anybody who's a mapper will be able to see it. And yeah, it's not a good look. So here's a key point when I'm crossing uh, the the, the longboard park thing. I want to be uh, pretty flat because I don't expect there to be any real uh, cant across the top here. On the corners, it's likely banked a bit, but it shouldn't be up at the top. It's um, even more important with roads. I think I missed a little hill in the out of bounds, didn't I? Yeah, I should probably get mapped. Is that up or down? I think that's actually down. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna ignore it because I'm not sure I don't have the tools brought in right now to figure it out and it's not worth 15 minutes of time to solve that question. Ah, oh, that's over and over exaggeration, but it's still true. So I thought about mapping this with a ride symbol because it's a uh, old road that's been cut into the hillside. But uh, on this, on a forest map, I'd absolutely be mapping it that way. But on the sprint map, it's wide enough that it shows up nicely in the contours, and the ride symbol is confusing because it, for newcomers at least, because it it's black and therefore it should be a trail. But when you get there, you don't see any trails, so. One of the symbols that I try to avoid using when possible uh, on beginner oriented maps. It's possible there's a cliff here as well, actually. That's a, two meters that close together. Shows up nicely in the slope shade. Um, it's very hard to know because I don't trust this LiDAR that much because it's not super high resolution. I'm reluctant to draw something in remotely. Um, and my brain is also warped right now because I've been doing so much forest standard mapping. 
um, that my brain is interpreting that it's a four meter drop where I use a one meter base map for a one to 15,000. So just need to be conscious of that internal bias. Makes me want to over map things. So you can kind of start to see this starting to take shape. I'm going to just fill this contour in just in case I tweak my crop line a bit. Um, and I'll fill this all with green in now. I should have done this earlier. So I think that uh, here's a good example of some stuff. I, I don't think that this is real. So I, I think that the, the LiDAR processing has gone a little bit sideways and I don't think that these sharp edges in here are real. So I'm just gonna smooth this out. Um, LiDAR processing artifacts are absolutely a thing with the medium to low quality LiDAR. But like it's totally possible I've got a little couple cliffy things. It's hard to know. I listen to music a lot when I'm mapping by myself, but with YouTube's demonetization stuff and taking channels down, uh, if you have any copyrighted music, I'm not particularly interested in doing that on stream. Not that this channel is actually monetized given the fact that it has zero subscribers and this is the first content put onto it. Oh, I'm kind of just doing this 
to see if it's beneficial for other people learning mapping at all because the tutorials for open orienteering mapper are somewhat lacking at the moment but the production time to make that is really really high so this is a reasonable compromise for me to be able to give something useful for the community while not well hopefully useful while not taking time away from mapping projects that I have to get done anyways or at least not significant time So you might be noticing that on a lot of the kind of ridges and re-entrants, I kind of over-exaggerate them a bit and smooth the corners out. And that is very intentional. It just helps to show the shapes of features better. All right, I think we're through about half the contours, even though it's uh, because the map gets flatter towards the bottom. perfectly honest one of the best ways to get better at using this program is to just grab a contour base map and start drawing contours using the curved lines because once you get a handle on how the curves behave your mapping speed on everything just goes gets way better uh, which contour does I have actually cheated this contour goes here some artifacts in the processing here because of the building uh, that's here the lidar kind of freaked out a bit and didn't process things um, and that's pretty standard that with as you, see, you can see on the house here as well it couldn't find the ground because it detect, detected there was a building roof Yeah, I, I can't really blame the viewership for going down during this segment either because it's pretty boring for everybody. throw a form line in here. I kind of want to show that this re-entrant does exist. I don't think I have any other form lines that particularly need to get drawn. It's not too many super distinct contour features on this hillside. Probably this guy here, which would be an erosion gully on a forest standard map. It's the only really one you'd be able to use as a control site.
I'm kind of pulling this contour back a little bit just because I want to show where that hole of green is and I don't want to give the impression that you can get through here legally anywhere. needs to be shown with a slightly pointier ridge. That's going to have to be a little depression. Based on the vegetation, it absolutely is. probably be tweaking it's been something I've been procrastinating is tweaking my LIDAR processing so that I can easily figure out what's up and down by bringing those in with two different symbol colors the uh, Terry A. Matheson scripts he's done that very nicely but it's actually a surprisingly labor intensive process to add that into my scripts So with this contour here, yes, it does jut up here technically, and technically these baseball diamonds are on a bit of a slope, but when you look at where the half meters go, this will be far more informative for the orienteer than if I cut it through the baseball diamond. I'll call this with a form line, I think. So I'll just not draw the contours through the stairs, it just helps to improve the stair legibility. So again, here's another example, just like the baseball diamonds. I'll choose to bring it across here instead. And then I actually saw something that I wanted with a form line here. I'm going to show that there's a ridge on that area. That is looking pretty darn good at this point. A few more contours to go. Some north lines are layout and the map is done with a little bit of field work. I 
I actually want a form line to show the top of this feature because this is pretty cool. This is actually reminding me that there was some weird little shenanigans there that I never actually dealt with. So again, I'll just add a note for my person doing field work. Anything here? So again, the field is a little bit slope, but just like the baseball diamond, it's far more informative for my participants if I show where the majority of the half meter contours go as opposed to where the true two meter interval lies. A lot of the, that's one of the things that a lot of mappers struggle with, with using the LIDAR basis for the first time as opposed to just the older methods of raw walking around and drawing contours based on what you see is they like to follow exactly where the contours go as opposed to using the contours to show the shapes of the landforms. It's an easy trap to fall into. of all the artifacts around the building I've kind of been cheating on all the contours on this side but I think this one does actually genuinely go more that direction Draw a few form lines in there. I think it's probably something like this. So a few little notes for my individual who's doing field work and otherwise this map is good to go. Um, I could draw some north lines and add a layout on and crop the map out, but it is lunchtime for me. So I'm gonna end stream and hopefully everybody watching learned something. We'll see if I do any more of these or not. Have a good one, bye.